Hey guys, Box Diego here with episode 7 of Ambition. Let's get started. Episode 7, The Interrogation. This is basically telling us what we did last episode. The tire iron, the bracelet, Yale's car, and the evidence supporting that Ted was not the murderer. And these, this is the uh, only stuff leaked to the media. And here we are now. Let's get started. Now, without further ado, I would like to welcome our Not friend and benefactor, Mr. Indeed. Walt Fink. This is the pocket affair of, of the mind of, of ideas what? Take a cold shower, lover boy, and keep your eyes on your plate. Thank you, Peter, for your introduction and inspiring call for sedation. <laughs> Or, uh, I mean, sedition. <laughs> Our two enemies are taxes and government regulation. Both can be slaughtered by inspiring fear in the general population. A nation in fear is a nation willing to accept drastic measures. Oh boy, I can see you're a person on a mission. So are you interested in the truth, or acquiring enough evidence to ensure a conviction? I want the truth. All right, then that's what you'll get. What do you want to know? What do you know about this bracelet? I gave it to him when we were dating. When we split, I asked for it back. I kept it in a box up in my room. Then I started getting these hellish nightmares, visions of torture and desperosity. When Ted escaped, he called and said he wanted it back, and it was then I realized that the nightmares were coming from that bracelet. I left it under the mat on the stairs of his apartment. It's an evil token. I'm not surprised he dropped it at the scene of the murder. When did you leave it? When did you leave the bracelet there? The day before the murder. How do you know the bracelet was found at the murder scene? Because you just told me, stupid. You really should go back to writing parking tickets. I don't think you've got the intelligiosity to be conducting a murder investigation. I said no such thing. Where were you at 11.30? Oh wait, never mind, this was it. Oh come on! You are constantly underestimating this guy. How many times does he have to escape and make fools of you before you rethink your procedures? Where were you at 11.30? I was with my boyfriend, Rolf Klink, at a fundraising dinner for the fascist party. Is that a joke? What about his faux pas in his speech? Yes, the poor dear accused his predecessor of inspiring sedation rather than sedition. I had to laugh. He likes to use big words, but you know, he never finished high school. Your relationship with Ted. Tell me about it. Ted is a violent man. He's extremely dangerous. He's a cold-blooded killer, but he can be very charming and deceptive. He beat me throughout our marriage, but nobody believed me. He's crazy. Nope, don't believe you. I did call the police, but he has friends there. Only one officer came. They had words. They laughed, and he left. Ted beat me and said if I ever called the police again, he'd kill me. That's when I knew my only hope was to get out with the kids. But look, I'm scared to death. Ted is going to escape again, and the next dead person is going to be me. Please, I'm begging you. I need police protection. 
Do you believe he's the murderer? Obviously, I didn't see him do it. But banging a woman over the head with a tire iron is certainly in character. He's mean-spirited, violent, and anti-feministic. I never said anything about a tire iron. Oh, wait. I think we have to say the long one right here. So maybe he didn't steal the car. Maybe he just stole the tire iron. Didn't you say the car was found outside his apartment? So he ate his pizza and left his apartment at, let's say, 11.30. Grabbed a tire iron out of the first car he saw, which just happened to be a stolen car, and went down to the lake where he ran into that woman. How do you know the car was left behind Ted's apartment? Because you just told me. No, I didn't. Then I must have read it somewhere or heard it on the news. Bull spit. All right, yeah, I parked it outside his apartment. So what? How was I to know he stole it? I thought it was his. How'd you get the car? I was at the dinner, you know, and went out for a smoke. I was walking up the lake road when I saw this red car coming straight at me, trying to kill me. Not everything's trying to kill you, honey. Now continue your story. This woman with short red hair was driving. She was hysterical. She jumps out of the car and starts walking ahead of me up the lake road. The next thing I see Ted driving this black dude in another car. The black dude gets out, gets into the red car, and then starts trolling for the red-haired woman. Continue. She crosses the road and starts walking real fast. He crosses over and starts driving real slow beside her on the wrong side of the road. He leans his arm out, you know, and they're arguing. Can you please continue and not stop? Ted jumped out of the silver car, grabbed a tire iron out of the trunk, and started running after the dude in the red car, screaming bloody murder. See, I don't get this. Why is she, like, stopping? Does she know that she has to stop or something? I told her to continue. Keep talking. So I went to have a look at this silver car. Like I said, I thought it belonged to Ted, and he owes me child support. I feel like Peter Griffin. And, and, continue. Or was it go on? Yeah, it was go on. <laughs> Continue. The last thing I saw was the woman gets into the red car and they speed off together and Ted chases them on foot and disappears with the tire iron. Like I said, Ted owes me child support, so I got into the silver car and took off. I had a uh, global history teacher who did this to me. Um, when I did an essay, he'd always say and on it. So I'm wondering why she just doesn't conti continue her story. And? Well, I realized what I was doing was stealing, and stealing is wrong. So I drove back to Ted's and left it there in the alley and grabbed a cab back to the dinner. That's it. Jesus Christ. You couldn't just say all that? All right. I think we're done here. Yeah, I've seen the black dude before. He's an operative for my boyfriend, Rolf. And the episode is done.